Hey guys, John here with Realtruck.com. Today I want to show you how to install the Snow Bear Winter Wolf Snowplow. Okay guys, first step of getting our plow together is to put our framework together for it. And as you can see here, we've got it all laid out. We've got our frame, we've got all of our mounting brackets, we've got our motor and all of our wiring harnesses and our hardware to put this together. So let's start building. Okay guys, we're start, ready to start assembling our framework for our plow. So the first thing we want to do is put together our A-frame. And the way we want to do that is take this piece, make sure that we have it laying just like this. And then we're going to take this piece and we're going to put it on here like so. And then the way we're going to attach this is we have this large bolt and the large washer and then we have a spacer and then we're going to put it through and put another large washer on the bottom and then the nut on the bottom to hold it together. Take our bolt and washer, put it through. Okay guys, we've got our A-frame together, but uh, we're going to move on and start putting the rest of this together. But before we do, I want to explain to you guys, I went ahead and tightened this bolt up that we put in here with our spacer and such. But when you tighten this up, you want to make sure you tighten it down so just a couple, three of the threads are sticking through the end of your, of your lock nut here. And the, the reason for that is if you over tighten this, then it won't allow this to turn. And something else to keep in mind is, is that after you use this plow for the first time, you're going to go back through and you're going to retighten all your bolts anyway, just to make sure that nothing has loosened up. So don't over tighten this, otherwise you won't be able to turn it. Okay, so now we're going to move on and we're going to attach our mount to our frame and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our side bars here and we're going to put them on like this and uh, once we get that up on there then we're going to take our bolts and put them through on the one side here and go ahead and put a nut on the end of that to hold it in place so that it doesn't fall back off there. It's usually a good idea before you get started. As you guys can see here, I've got all my bolts and, and such separated out to go ahead and do that because that'll save you a little time, a little uh, headaches trying to find which ones are supposed to go where when you're in the middle of putting it together. Now that once this side's attached, then we're going to do the same thing with the other side. And we're not going to tighten anything up just yet because we've got another piece that's going to go in here that holds our, our motor for raising and lowering our plow. Okay, now once we have these all on and have them started in place, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get a hold of our plow mounting brackets, or our, our plow motor mounting brackets rather, and we're going to put it together. <clears throat> Get it lined up here and get that in place.
Okay, now once we have that all set like that, we can go ahead and tighten all this up and then I'll show you guys how to attach our plow motor onto here after we tighten this down. So let's get that done. All right guys, we've got our bolts all tightened up. So we're ready to put our worm drive motor back on there. And what this is for, this is gonna be for lifting your plow up and down. So you wanna make sure that we have this installed on there uh, and, uh, and installed correctly. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach this to our mount here. And then once we have that, we'll attach our motor to here. And then we're gonna tighten all these bolts up. Now, keep in mind guys here when we're tightening this stuff up that all these things have to be able to pivot and move. So you don't wanna over tighten them, you just wanna tighten them. All right guys, once we have our bolts all snug down on, on our uh, worm drive motor here, uh, what we're going to do next then is we're going to be hooking up our chain and the chain is to use to raise and lower your plow blade. So we're going to do that and uh, I'll show you guys how to hook that up here in just a second. Take the longer of the two chains that come with our kit and we're going to take our, our D clip and we're going to just pin the chain right on here like so. And then the other end we're going to put through here at the bottom and attach this onto here. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and tip this thing back so that way we can get access to underneath it here a little bit better and uh, get these nuts on the bottom of there. Now something to keep in mind guys when you're putting this on, make sure that there's a slot in here, make sure the chain sits into that slot so that way it doesn't get bound up underneath this bracket that we're putting on here to hold the chain. And then it's just a simple process of tightening up the nuts on the underside of here. And we'll have our chain installed. That's all set and ready to go. So what we're going to do at this point now then is we're just going to set this piece aside and we're going to start putting together our blade for our plow. All right guys, we've got our blade laid out and we're ready to start putting it together. As you guys can see, it comes with everything that we need to get this together, our scrapers, our, our uh, snow flap for the top and also our skid feet and all of our hardware and such to bolt this thing up. Our two plow halves together. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to start bolting it up and uh, really simple, you just take the larger bolts that come with your bolt pack and the washers, just put them through the holes here, washer on each side, and then put a nut on the other side. And we're just gonna go through and do them all like that. And then uh, we'll come back and tighten them all up. Hey guys. What we're going to do here is this bolt right here, we're going to leave it attached in here, but we're not going to tighten this one down because this is going to be one of the bolts that we're going to use to attach this to our framework and uh, for the operation of the plow. So we'll go ahead and tighten the rest of these down and we're just going to leave that one in, but leave it loose. 
center bolts tightened up here. We've got our two halves put together. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our scraper on and that's going to go across here on the bottom. All right guys, so we're ready to attach our scraper. What we're going to do is we're just going to put it on here like so. Make sure that all of our holes are lined up. And then we're going to take the carriage bolts and then we're going to put them up from the bottom like this because we've got this flipped up backwards. So this is actually the back side. So we're going to put them through this way. So here we have our carriage bolt and we're going from, the, from this side, just like this. And just like so. And then what we're going to do then is we're just going to go all the way across. We have another piece of our scraper on the other side and uh, we're going to go across, put all those in, and then we're going to come back, tighten up all these bolts, and then we'll be ready to put the top part on. Okay guys, so we're ready to put our snow deflector on. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move it into place and make sure that our holes are all lined up. I've already done that and laid it out here and uh, got our plates ready to go here that are going to go on here. And uh, we're going to take our bolts, and we're going to put them through here. and then attach one of the nuts to the underside. And then on the end we're going to put our marker poles on. And then we're just going to go ahead and go along the whole length of the top of our blade here and attach all these as we go. Alright guys, we've got our snow deflector on, our, on the top of our plow. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go along and tighten up all of our bolts that hold it on. So we're just about ready to put our blade onto our, onto our framework here. Uh, however, first thing we want to do here before we do that is go ahead and, and put our safety chain together. Basically what this is for is so that you can attach it to this while your blade is up. So if something happened going down the road, for some reason it came down, that it wouldn't come all the way down to the ground and create some major issues. Besides DOT probably wouldn't like that if you're dragging it down their highway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these, this clip, which is just one of these uh, carabiner type clips and uh, put one end of our chain on here like so. And then this other clip, we're just gonna unscrew this and we're going to put our chain, the other end of our chain on here and then we're going to attach it right up here. You can see there's two holes in this frame. There's one here, one just like it over here. We're just going to attach that here. And then whenever you have this thing not in use, then you're going to take this in and just lock it right into down here into that hole there. Otherwise, what it'll do then is you'll just have it hooked right here. And uh, so we'll go ahead and put this on. And once we have that on and the hole lined up, we just go ahead and screw this back through it. And there we go. And that'll keep it on there and in place so that our safety chain's all hooked up. So now that we've got that done, guys, we're ready to go ahead and uh, put our blade on our plow and our, uh, our feet, our skid feet onto our blade. So, all right, guys, so we've got it ready to go here. What we're going to do then is remember the bolt we left loose when we put our two halves together. We'll go ahead and take that out. And then we're going to take our frame and move it up to our plow here. And we'll get our bolt holes lined up. Alright guys, once we have our bolts all in, then we can go ahead and tighten them up. Uh, once again, remember that this blade has got the flex on here, so uh, 
don't tighten them all the way down. You just want to tighten them down to the point where they're secure. So let's get that. Okay, got those snug down and in place. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to come back here and we're going to attach our skid plates and our skid feet to the back side of this uh, blade. Alright guys, so we're going to attach our skid plate or our skid shoe brackets and uh, what we want to do those is you guys can see here they're two different shapes two different angles, well that's going to depend on, on your vehicle and the height that your, your uh, blade's going to be when it goes to the ground because you want this thing to run level with the ground so it's going to depend on where it's at, which one of these you're going to use. I already know that I'm going to need this one for the vehicle we're putting this one on, uh, however if you do put one of these on and you find that it's not running even, you can always take it back off, just two bolts and, and your your uh, skid shoe and put the other one on, not a big deal. So let's go ahead and put these on. take our, our skid plate here and one of the large hex nuts and we're just going to put it right on the threads here on the stem because what this is is this is going to be our adjuster so that way you can adjust these up and down and that's going to keep this blade from slamming right slap down on the ground and either tearing up your ground or your driveway uh, neither of which you want to do so it's important that you adjust these and you know it's your own preference but I like to set these at about three-eighths of an inch to three-quarters of an inch off the ground. And then once that's on then you'll take the one with the self-locking style on it and just attach that in on the top. And usually you can go ahead and just leave these loose until you uh, know exactly at what height you're going to want those to be so you can adjust them. Uh, however, I've already measured ours so I know where I want this so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one up. Alright guys, you can see here we've got this side all set. So now we're going to do go over and do the other side. Uh, it goes exactly the same way as this one does. And uh, then we're going to be ready to attach a couple springs on here and just about ready to put this on the truck. Guys, we've got our, our skid shoes on. So uh, the next thing we want to do then is go ahead and attach our springs. And we're just going to put our spring right here in this hole here, bring it around, and attach this to it, and put our washer and our nut on the other side. And then what we're going to do after we have this on here, when we tighten these up, you want to kind of get a, a, a decent measurement on the, how much thread you have sticking out on each side because the other side is going to be just like this side but you want to adjust them evenly so uh, because what this is for is so that if you hit something with your plow your plow will fold over and then it will slap back up, up again like it's supposed to rather than tearing a bunch of stuff up so that's kind of a really cool idea there. <coughs> so let's go ahead and tighten this one up where, where we want it and then we'll uh, get a measurement and then we'll do the other side and then we'll be ready to put this on the truck. Got our springs attached now and uh, measured out so that they're even. And uh, at this point, we're all done putting our plow together. So the next thing we want to do then is go ahead and bring our truck in here that this is going to be going on and uh, start hooking up our electrical to the truck so that we can get this plow on the truck and ready to move some snow. What we're going to do then is we're going to take our, our main control unit and we're going to find a nice location under the hood to put this thing. Now, 
The thing about doing this is that every vehicle is going to be a little bit different on where you can put it, where you can't. Uh, but you want to keep this uh, someplace where it's not going to get the heat from the engine and it's going to stay cool. So what we've decided then is we're going to just mount ours right down in here because we have a, a bolt here for the bumper and uh, we're going to mount it to that and then we'll run our wires back to our battery. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this up here and uh, then I'm going to come back and I'll show you guys um, how to go about wiring up your wiring and also the controller for the remote, what you're going to do with that. So, All right guys, so we got our main controller hooked up. The next thing we want to do is hook up our controller for our wireless remote. Kind of the same thing, just find some place where we can locate this where it's going to be out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and locate ours right here. And I'm just going to put a screw through here to hold this in place. And what I've done here is I've gone ahead and drilled a pilot hole for the screw. And now we're just going to screw this right into here. Okay, once that's in place, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our wire that's going to plug into our main unit and we're going to run it over to the main unit and I'm just going to run it down through here and send it across to the main unit there. So we'll just bring it through here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it back here behind the bumper brackets just to keep it so that it's not hanging all over the place. So like I said before, each vehicle is going to be a little bit different on how you do this depending on where you mount it. So uh, just because I'm doing mine this way don't necessarily mean that you'll do yours this way and so on and so forth. Okay, so once we have this in a nice spot there, then we're just going to open up our box here and plug this into here. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow for our wireless remote to function on the uh, well. Okay, so we've got that ready to go. I'm just going to explain this real quick. And so that's going to, this is going to allow our wireless remote to function. Now if you weren't using the wireless remote, if you were going to use the manual one, then all you would do is simply unplug this and plug this one in in place of it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to toss this one in the truck and keep it handy just in case we ever need it. So um, we're going to finish wiring this up and we'll be ready to go. All right guys, so we got our ground for our wireless remote and we're going to go ahead and put it right here on this fender bolt location. Now before you put this in here, make sure that you've got it cleaned up really well if that's where you choose to put yours. Uh, like I said before, it's going to vary from vehicle to vehicle. <coughs> so uh, where you put it really is dependent on where you mount your remote. Okay, so that's going to give us a real nice ground right there. And uh, so what we're going to do then is we'll bunch this wire up in here and uh, take some zip strips and just zip it up in here nice and neat and keep it uh, nice and tidy. And then we're going to take our, our antenna wire for our wireless remote and we're just going to move it up here and uh, put it through in a place here where it will actually be out and allow for good contact. So we'll just stick that right up in there. So the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to jump over to the other side and attach our relay to our battery and get ready to wire in our main unit. What we've done here is you've noticed that it's got this plate on it. This plate comes with your uh, wiring kit and we've attached it to one side of our breaker. Now what we're going to do then is this side is going to be for our hot wire that comes from our main control box and this side is going to go here on the battery. So we're going to go ahead and hook this onto the battery and then we'll bring our wire up from the main control box and hook it up to this side.
There, we've got our, our breaker hooked up, and so we're ready to go ahead and wire our main control box. Now, something to keep in mind when you're wiring up your control box is that like we grounded our, uh, our wireless control unit over there to the, to the body, you cannot do that with the main box. The main box has to be grounded to the battery. So make sure that when you do that, you're running both the positive up to this and the negative up to the ground on your battery. So let's get that done, and then we'll be ready to put our plow on and check for uh, function and operation. So in this particular truck, and it's going to be different depending on what uh, year, make, model you're working on, but I'm going to go ahead and remove this cover and be able to run my wiring up here and underneath this cover over to the battery. Just keep it nice, neat, and out of the way where it's not going to get tangled up in anything. All right, guys, we've got our wiring all tucked nice and neatly out of the way not hanging all over the place, going to get into anything. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and hook up our battery. And as you can see here, these come tagged with where they go, just in case you know you have any questions. This one says right on it, battery positive. It's the red one. And then the black one says to battery negative. So that would be on the ground. So what we're going to do is, if you remember our relay that we put on here, we're going to go ahead and unscrew this nut off the bottom of it here. And I know you guys can't really see that, but I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, once we have that off, then we're going to attach our wire, just like so. And then put this back on, and then we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. And I know at this point you guys have probably already looked at this, and you can see that these studs coming out of this relay aren't the largest in the world so don't over tighten this guys just get it secure I don't want to see you guys breaking stuff off by being the incredible hawk or something okay then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here on the negative one however the negative side doesn't have a relay we're just going to attach it straight to our battery cable Just like so. I'll move my hand here just a second so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going there just like that. So once we have that on there, then we're going to go ahead and tighten this up. All right, guys, so now comes the fun part. Now we're going to bring our plow over and we're going to put it on the front of our truck and hook up our connectors and then we're going to find a place for all of our connector wiring to lay it nice and neat and go ahead and zip strip that up out of the way uh, once we do a little check make sure everything's working right on our plow it goes up and down like it's supposed to all right guys so we've got our plow up on our pins uh, so what we want to do here is uh, probably what i would suggest is getting a friend to help you lift this thing because it is pretty heavy and then once you get it up on here, then you can go ahead and run your pins through and lock them down and uh, do that on both sides. I'm gonna go over and do the one on the other side and then we'll be ready to check the uh, operation of the plow. We have our really awesomely cool handheld wireless remote. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn it on, just push the green button, turn it on. And then we're gonna check the operation of our plow, make sure it works and goes up and down like it's supposed to. Okay, everything's working like it's supposed to here. So what we're gonna do now then is we're gonna go ahead and turn off our remote and we're gonna take all of our wiring that operates our plow and we're gonna get this all bundled up nice and neat and out of the way so that way uh, we don't have it hanging in the way of anything. Okay guys, we've got our wiring all bundled up and tucked neatly away behind the bumper where it's not gonna hang it down, it's not gonna get tangled up in anything and we know everything's working on our plow so that'll complete our install of the Snow Bear Winter Wolf Snowplow. And remember guys, until next time, happy motoring.